Welcome to notes 8.6, Essential Skill H6, Parametric Equations. Parametric equations are really two equations in one. We have an x coordinate that's based on time. It is a function of time. And the y coordinate based on a function of time. And so we state the x and y motion separately so that we can watch the effects of time. Take a moment to read through this first example. Here is our parametric equation. It's this pair of equations putting x and y both in terms of t. In this case, t is going to run from negative 2 to 2. To graph this, we make a table of values. We extend this table of values to include t because t drives our values of x and y. To fill in the table of values, we can plug in negative 2 into the x equation. So this is 3 times negative 2 squared. This becomes our first x coordinate when t is negative 2. We plug in negative 2 into the y equation. That's 2 times negative 2, and we get negative 4, forming the pair of negative 4. We can plot this on the grid. We can continue in this fashion, finding the points that are going to be on this graph. t equals negative 1. We won't always have enough colors to plot each point in a corresponding color, so very often uh, we'll just mark them with the value of t. This is a continuous path, and so we can trace this particle as it runs through values of t. Notice I do not extend past t equals 2 or t equals negative 2. Our domain prohibits that. We stop here. We stop here. This looks very much like a sideways parabola with boundaries. We can verify that algebraically by doing something called eliminating the parameter. This is the same example. I've simply copied the parametric equation over. To eliminate the parameter, this means we're eliminating t. What we do algebraically is we solve for t and then substitute into the other equation. Our answer has the parameter eliminated. In other words, there is no t in the equation anymore. We can see that x has a single power, y is squared. This is going to support our claim that this is a sideways parabola. Notice what we've lost. There's no longer a t parameter, so we no longer know how this relates to time. In other words, we lose track of the speed of this particle in motion. Let's go back to the previous graph and draw some arrows. We're going to go in order of time. Time starts at negative 2. This particle then travels to where time is negative 1. It continues traveling until we reach the end of its domain. This is called the orientation of the graph, and we mark it with arrows just like this. Also notice that we get an idea of speed because between t equals one, negative 2 and t equals negative 1, we travel a greater distance than between when t is negative 1 and t equals 0. This particle is slowing as it approaches the vertex of the parabola. So that is extra information that we get by using parametric equations. Let's continue with some examples. X 
at any time. Please pause and try this on your own. Now we eliminate the parameter. Now we see that this is definitely a parabola, and we can connect the dots in a proper fashion for that. Notice there's an arrow at the right side, but not on the left. That's because t must be greater than or equal to zero. We finish by drawing orientation arrows in the direction of t. For a parametric equation involving trig equations, we use convenient anchor points, pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 2. It's plausible to guess that this is going to form a circle. To figure that out algebraically takes a little bit of sneakiness with identities. To make this work, we take these two equations and add them together. And then we remember we have an identity that says cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t is 1. If we multiply 3 by 4, we get the equation of a circle. Don't forget to fill in the orientation arrows. From 0 to pi over 2, pi over 2 to pi, and so on. Feel free to attempt the last two on your own before I fill them in myself. Uh, I'll fill them in without commentary. Thank you for watching.